Raptors talk. Got my guest Rory. YMCA Hall of Fame legend right here. The man, the myth, the legend. Brought him in, of course, for the Raptors talk. Got some great, great information for you today. All I'll say today, big game, 1 o'clock. Raptors Celtics game 1. Uh, Eastern Conference semifinals. Going to be a big one. So we're going to preview the game for you today. Talk about the Raptors. Just a quick little video for you. So first off, Rory, what do you expect today from the game? Anything like you think the key to them to winning? Or what do you think is going to happen? Who's going to win? Well, first of all, thank you for that intro. And I do do some work at the YMCA from time to time. <laughs> uh, obviously, Raptors haven't had great game one success. You know what I mean? So mm. just come out with energy, I think, is the main thing. If they come out aggressive early, I think set the tone. You know what I mean? Because they're a little shaky in game ones in the past. Mm. Obviously, the pressure on the outside, on the perimeter, the, from Smart, Tatum, and Brown has been a problem for like the Raptors shorter guards, you know, Van Vliet and Lowry. Mm -hmm. Hard to get into their stuff when they're being hounded by Smart and Jalen. Boston's young and feisty, right? So. Yeah, so they have great perimeter defense, so I think the key is going to be to get our guards off early. So the, I know the one game, they actually played Pat McCaw a lot. Not that I'm asking to see Pat McCaw out there, but it allowed them to run Lowry off of some off-ball screens. It allowed uh, Van Vliet to get off some off-ball screens so they're not hounded all the way up the court mm -hmm. by like a Marcus Smart or something. So I think having Siakam run point a little bit more, have Siakam bring up the ball, that way you can set some off-balls for Lowry and Van Vliet to kind of make it easier. Well, a lot of guys can handle the ball. you got, you got Powell, you have yeah. Sala times, Siakam, Van Vliet, Lowry. Yes. Like, a lot of ball handlers on that team. That and I think that's key. And... If we get some other people to handle the ball, that way we can set Lowry and Van Vliet up into better positions instead of having them use all their energy just to kind of bring it up. So I think – I know Nurse is a good coach, so he's definitely going to get our guards into some good spots to succeed. And we do that early, hit some shots, obviously, it's a make or miss league, so get them going early, hit some shots, feeling good about ourselves, and I think that'll be the key to winning for the Raptors. Yeah, they're the first game, you think? Got them winning? Oh, no? <sighs> it's tough. Lowry's coming off the rolled ankle. No Gordon Hayward. It's tough. It's, uh, it's just, as a Raptors fan, I'm never confident about the game one. I think, I think they can do it, though. I think Nurse is going to have a pretty solid game plan, so... I may, I may, I'm going to admit my bias right now, but I think it'll be a really close game. I think the Raps pull it off and um, look for Ananobi to be a big part of this one, too. Yeah, for sure. Well, I mean, the Raptors, they have size, they have depth, and really, it seems like every game, some all stepped up for them. We saw a big game uh, from Powell. We've seen yeah, big games from Jackham. Ben Fleet had a couple of huge games in the Nets series. I think when it comes to getting a base going early, if you get those guys in foul trouble, and for defense-wise, the Raptors, there's so many ways they can play defense. And, you know, with Boston, also, there's not a lot of depth right now. Losing Hayward's a huge loss for them. If you can really shut down Kemba Walker and Jason Tatum, you force these guys like Smart and Tice to shoot those balls, you're going to do pretty well, I feel like. I think the Raptors are taking game one. I like them in this series. Coming before, I picked Celtics coming out of the East. That was before the Hayward injury. I also watched them play the Philly series. And they didn't get the sweep, but I was not very optimistic with them coming out of the East now. Just watch them play that series. I think they're a bit... They don't have the depth. They don't have what it takes to come out now. Their bench is going to hurt them. The Raptors are a very deep team. I think this game's going 6 or 7. I think Kemba and Tatum are going to have some big games, but it's coming down for Tatum where it's like this is the one team where I think this is one of their teams equipped to defend the Celtics and defend guys like Tatum. I think Tatum, if he has a great series, this could be a defining moment for him, but I feel like he's going to have hard times getting through it and so the defense they're going to put on him. They're going to double him at times. I feel like they should at times. Double him, get the ball out of his hands, force the other guys to shoot, okay? Like, Boston doesn't have a lot of great players right now. They're deaf. They're losing some players. So I feel like you force the other guys to shoot, you're going to have success. Run those screen and rolls. Get the big guys. Marcus Gasol, get um, Siakam, get a block. They're going in the paint. They're having a hard time defending that in the paint. Get them in foul trouble. Get, get them in foul trouble. I think you can win this series. I think it's going in six. I'm now taking the wrap because I know I switched, but before this, I think Hayward would have been a huge X factor for the Celtics. He, he provides another triple score. He almost averaged about 20 points a game. Would have been another big score for them. We saw Boston during the season had great success against the Raptors. They seem to have our number, but they're looking a bit depleted right now without Hayward. So I think I'm taking the Raptors to win this series. I like their chances. I think we're going to see it come today. Raptors are going to come out. They're going to play strong. They're going to set the tone for this series. I think it might go seven, but I'm taking the Raptors in six. 
What do you think? Perhaps in six. I definitely think it's going to be a long series. I think it's going to be a hard-fought series. I think the depth that you mentioned, uh, how Celtics don't really have much, you're going to have to rely on people like Wanamaker. Cantor's going to play minutes. Like It is shaky once you get down that bench. Obviously, missing Hayward is huge. So, like you said, Tatum may be the best player in this series, but I think the Raps just overall more depth with scoring from every position. Plus the bigs, the bigs of the Raps, huge advantage, right? You got Tice, like you yeah. said, you get him in foul trouble, then you're looking at Cantor. Then you got really no other options after that that you're loving. You're like semi Ojale maybe, but like, they, they can trap Tatum in that corner too and yeah. force him to pass that ball and yeah. it's like and, yeah. keep the ball out of his hands and you're forcing the other guys to score and they're gonna have a tough time scoring against the Raptors regardless, I feel like. Yeah, so, like Marcus Smart like might have sure. a night, but like he's not gonna be a consistent shooter throughout yeah, the he's series. Gonna like, no shots all the time, so yeah. So I'll, I'll live with him and Tice shooting threes and making them because if you can keep having those plays going, get the ball out of Walker and Tatum's hands for the most part, you gotta live with that because you know they're not gonna always make those shots. They're not great point shooters, so yeah, I agree. I would go Raps in six as well. I I believe they can do this. No Hayward. I would probably would have said Raps in seven. Hayward probably would have pushed it, but mm-hmm. Raps in six. I'm feeling confident. Let's go Raps. So outside of today's game, a few quick questions that relate to the off season. So obviously, it's going to be a big off season for Toronto mm-hmm. with regards to resigning their free agents. Obviously, they have quite free agents coming up. The three big ones though, we got Baca, Gasol, and Van Fleet. What do you think their future looks like? Are they all resigning, like going somewhere else? What do you think is going to happen with that? I don't know, to be honest. I know priority, we've got to sign Van Vliet. We need Van Vliet back. He's huge. The small ball era is upon us, right? We need people who can play make, who can shoot. Obviously, great defender, tenacious, mm-hmm. love his energy. So Not scared at the moment either, it seems like. He no, loves it. Clutch. That's clutch. Awesome. Obviously, we saw that last year's playoffs. Number one priority, get Van Vliet back. Obviously, Ibaka has been great this season. Probably the best season of his career, you say? He seems happy, too, playing Toronto. Like, he's yeah. made, it made his home, it seems like. He was always... He's embraced it. A scarf for the winter time. You know that he, <laughs> he, he was a He put OG on scarves, I heard. <laughs> uh, Gasol, you know what? It's been a good run. He was a way better fit for us than JV. Helped us win that championship. But Absolutely. unless he's willing to take a big discount, I don't see the Raps having space for him, to be honest. And... I'm fine with tipping my cap to him. Good job, good job, Gasol. You were a champion. You helped us win one. If you want to come back on a smaller deal, for sure. But I don't know what the market's going to be like for him. So if we can get a Baca at a decent price, I think he's going to be pretty sought after. It's going to be tough. Priority, Van Vliet, coming back for sure. Probably going to get some big money. Mm-hmm. And a Baca... I don't know what the market's like for him. Would love to have him back. Gasol, if he's coming back on a smaller deal, sure. If not, mm-hmm. what's well, the very intriguing part? Because no one knows the market well, like this. Coming into this this uh, season here, the cap's gonna lower because of the whole pandemic. Mm-hmm. They missed some games. No one knows the cap. Like it's gonna be totally different than years past. I'm somewhat in agreement with you as well. I think Van Fleet. They gotta keep him regardless. Pay the there, there, there's going to be a market for Van Fleet, though. It's huge. You're hearing the Knicks, the Pistons, and the Suns are all looking at him. I think that Van Fleet respects Strong. He respects the coaching, the management, the organization. I feel like New York, he'll listen to offers. I feel like they're going to throw him a four-year deal, $25 million a year from out of the Knicks to the Pistons. I feel like he's going to come to Strong and say, hey, this is what they've offered me. Do you want to match it? Give me an extra year to five years. I feel like... These years and come back and say, hey, here's five years, $22 million, a little bit less, but we'll give you that extra year. Because also they want a bit of cap space from as well. I put to get a deal done. These years going to pay them, but like, I think it's going to be like the $20, $25 million range. There's still quite a bit of money, but like it's, it's security for him for sure. If you have five years, $20 million U.S. security right there, Van Fleet. I think he would accept that. Also, I feel like the Pistons might throw like a – you could even throw $30 million a year at him, which it's – it's unlikely, but it's possible depending on how the cap looks. But the Pistons have some money, so always New York has quite a bit of cap space, enough for a max free agent. Do they consider getting a max free agent? Potentially, he's been huge. I mean, if someone like New York or Detroit, you have to, you have to sign somebody, right? You need a big, a big free agent splash, so that could be one looking at. I feel like Toronto's going to pay him, I just don't think, like, more towards the $20 million range. I think a Baca's similar. Baca's not going to have a huge market just because, like, there's not a lot of cap space on teams this year. I feel like he's going to get a, lo- a lower amount, but he, he seems to embrace Strong as his home there. And Gasol is very interesting, I feel like, because Gasol, I feel like he's going to be looking for 
more of a veteran minimum deal. I feel like he's going to consider the LA teams potentially. I think with like he's down to ring chase again. He's had his time in Toronto, but I feel like regardless, he's getting a deal around two or three million. Does he got a minimum deal? I think he's, he's gotten paid now. He's made big money with the Grizzlies and the Raptors. He's made his money in his career. He's down now just to like play for a winning team. We'll see if, if Toronto wants to get him, like makes the finals. Maybe he's considering Toronto on that team. I think also look out for a great fit for him. I think he would consider is the Dallas Mavericks. Can you imagine him at center because he's playing the four and then kind of has some. With that, they have a good ball movement. I feel like he would fit great with them. He can also shoot threes. You slide him in there for 20 minutes, you pay him the minimum. He could be a great fit. Dallas looks like they could be a really good team next year. The way they play this year, add a few guys next year that could be right there at top of the West. I feel like top three. Look out for that. I feel like he's going somewhere, potentially Clippers, Lakers, Mavericks, and then the Raptors as well, the Dark Horse. Watch out for that. But I feel like it's going to be hard to like pay him anything more than a minimum regardless of what team he goes to. I think he'll accept the minimum go to a good team, whether it's the Raptors or someone in the West. And you'll still see Boucher then pick up the backup center. You'll have a Bacchus starting center, Boucher will come back. He'll sign a relatively smaller deal as well. He's not going to be a lot of money out there for him either, but he'll come back you know, on a longer year deal. Also, look out for the market too with saying because the cap's going to go down for a few years and spike back up once everything's played out. Look for some guys who to sign like a one, two year deal too. Yeah, sure. Possibly even Van Fleet signed like a two year deal for my money to wait to get the fucking the max deal. Like maybe Van Fleet, maybe he believes he's going to be like a star in this league and maybe he'll take a two year deal and hope for like a max deal coming up in two years where he's getting paid 30, 35 million, right? So. I think Van Fleet would rather have that five-year security, you know, just to have that, get the big money, and look out for somebody like Azabaka, maybe even take a smaller deal, um, Sam McCassell. Last question I'm going to ask you, we're going to stay on the whole free agency thing. 2021, you probably know where I'm heading, Giannis. Woo! The big free agent of 2021, there's a lot of speculation where he's going. Obviously, there's many executives in the league believing that Masai truly believes that they have a legitimate chance at signing Giannis to the Raptors, all of the international city, very diverse, great coaching staff, great management, a great organization. They definitely would make him feel welcome. A lot of positive things in Toronto. They're playing with that team. So what do you think chance they say to Milwaukee, the champion of Toronto? Well, first of all, you just mentioned Giannis, and I'm, I'm literally drooling over the fact mm-hmm. that the Raptors getting Giannis. Like, that would it's obviously... Possibility. It would be amazing. All right? It would be amazing. My prediction... Like you said, with the cap, it's all going down. I think he, the best chance for him to secure the bag is to stay in Milwaukee. He seems like he really likes it. They were a really good team this year. They were, like had a great regular yeah. season. We'll see what happens here in the playoffs. Like if they fizzle out, they lose to Miami. Yeah. I, I would lean more that he might leave, but you know what? The Milwaukee organization has tried their best to put good guys around them. They signed Middleton. Unfortunately, they let Brogdon go, but. They had an amazing team this year. Mm-hmm. Seems like he likes Milwaukee. He's a loyal guy. Yeah. My prediction would be that he stays. He probably can get the most money, the most years there. But as a Raptors fan, can you just imagine if we got young? I mean, you said it about the Raptors. You imagine that you did. I've always said the Raptors right now, this team is like a superstar away from being like a championship contender for the next five years. Like, they're built like that. They're, you know, like, all you want Stafford to be that guy. But can you imagine, like, Yonks and Stafford together and Van Fleet? I'm going to say 60% Bucks, 20% Raptors, 20% other team. I think Knicks are a Derek horse. See how this year plays out. I could see them making a big sign. Kind of trade Chris Paul, kind of signing DeRozan. I think they're going to have a better team this year than Knicks. Watch out for them, too. They're, they've kind of changed. They've been more respectful now. They brought in Rose there, managed team now. I think it's going to depend too how the season plays out, next season plays out. Right now, there's a lot of variables coming into it, but we've seen we've seen LeBron, we've seen Durant, we've seen these stars change teams. We know how much rings mean to these players, and it, it it's tough because you, you thought Durant was going to stay with the Thunder, but in the end, it was just that pressure of having to win a ring. It got to him. He went to the Warriors, obviously. So I feel like right now we'll see how it plays out. Giannis, like, as of right now, it seems like yeah, he loves Milwaukee. He wants to play for them, but at some point. You want to win too, right? And it's that going to change his mindset eventually. Like he's going to be like, wait, I need to win. I think the Lakers are a long shot. They believe they have a chance of getting him. I just feel like he doesn't want to play with LeBron. He'd rather play against him just like Kawhi, right? I feel like the Raptors would be a great fit. Watch out for the Knicks. People have the Warriors. The Warriors same boat as Lakers. Like, I don't think he wants to join a super team either. He wants to go to a good team like the Raptors or even the Knicks if they can build a culture over there now this year. It's going to depend on how they do this year, right? Because they, they have a lot of cap space going from them. They can sign two max players. If they bring in a guy like Chris Paul, create a nice culture there next year, and then you add a guy like Giannis. I have been saying this for a couple of years that the Bucs should have gone out and traded for Paul. I think Paul and a lot of people would have been great together. They should have traded Bledsoe and a few other guys. They should have grabbed Chris Paul, had him and Giannis. I think would have fit great together. 
the Bucks seem like hesitant to make these trades, but we'll see. Maybe this summer they, they pull off a huge trade and they say, hey, you know what? We couldn't get done this year. We need to win champions. Our last year proved beyond. We got to make a big trade. Look at the Raptors when they trade for Kawhi. They got to make a big splash, right? So we'll see how that plays out. I, it's leaning towards the Bucks. I think coming in next year we'll have a little bit better understanding of like what he's what he's thinking and like more likely where he's going to go. But right now it's a bit of a toss up. But like it's you, you think it's the Bucks fault because of that same thing about you know LeBron staying with the Cavs and Durant staying with the Thunder, right? People didn't see LeBron going to Miami. Like, no, they'll probably stay with the Cavs, you know, but, like, Miami's a long shot. Even the Warriors were a long shot for Durant. But these things happen, right? So, I think we'll know back to that. Yeah, I think Toronto would be a great fit for him. Yeah. Just, Based on these playoffs, too, I think, see how Milwaukee, if, if they win a championship this playoffs, like, you definitely stay in it. You know what I mean? So, yeah, it, it'll, it'll become more clear. Right? It'll just, become more clear. Can they get done? Can they win, right? And they seem a bit off right now since the bubble started back up. So, we'll see if he can do it. And, I think Milwaukee, they're still they're still much star away from that. It seems like they struggle a bit, like when he's not on the floor at times, even when he gets doubled, it's like they have a hard time sometimes finding that secondary score. They want to be Milton, but I feel like he's not quite at that kind of second star level yet. He's an all star, but like they need one more guy. Really. I feel like Chris Paul would be a great guy there. So you have Paul Milton, the honest, be a great trio there. I know Paul, he can get he can get that. He can score if he has to. Be a great fit. But that's just, that's just my that's my thought process. But it's, it's, all right. that's all we got for today. Today's video for you guys. Thanks for coming out, Rory. It's good to see you. I'll be back soon. Raptors game today at 1 o'clock. Check it out, guys. It's going to be a great series. The NBA is back. I know we had a bit of a hiatus a couple of days, but they are.